For hackers that find themselves with access to a macOS computer, it might initially be confusing as to how to get around. Today, we'll go over situational awareness attacks on macOS computers on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. For hackers gaining access to a macOS computer that's vulnerable, one of the first steps is almost always to establish situational awareness. Now, this means fingerprinting the device you found yourself with access to, and it's a good idea to find out what it's connected to, what the user has permission to do, and begin gathering information about the system. Now, in order to do this, we'll need a macOS computer in order to profile it and try to dig up as much information as we can. Once you have one, you can also check out the excellent Nullbyte article written by Tokyo Neon, and I also encourage you to follow him on Twitter because his content is super great. Once you have a macOS computer that's ready to go, then we'll start going over the steps right now. Now to learn about situational awareness attacks today, we're going to be referring to the Nullbyte article written by Tokyo Neon. Now in this article, we're gonna be going over the built-in tools so that once we get into a system, we can start to profile it and figure out exactly what's attached and what we can do. So first up, let's go ahead and SSH into a macOS computer. Let's say that we maybe put in a USB rubber ducky script to open an SSH port or something like that, and now we have backdoor access to this computer. We would go ahead and type SSH, and this is ready a team, at 192.168.0.36. And then we'll supply the password. And congratulations, we're in a computer, but this doesn't tell us much information. So you can see that we've logged in, but without initially knowing what was going on, it might be difficult for us to understand exactly what we've stumbled upon. Now, the first thing we're gonna go over is the system profiler. And this can be, if you just run it without any arguments, pretty intense because it produces a whole lot of feedback. And this is detailed information on the system, including hardware, software, versions installed, configurations, all that good stuff. So first to take a look at it, let's just type system underscore profiler and then tac tac help. Here we can see that there are a bunch of examples and we can generate different data types. And this is really useful because we can use these data types to extract information about the system. Now let's go ahead and use the list data types argument because this is what's going to give us the ability to look through the different data types and see which ones might be useful. So we'll go back and run system profiler and this time we'll add list data types. Okay, you can see we have all different types of data types. And here we can see network data type might be useful for finding out about the network we're connected to. We could uh, look for uh, things related to the firewall. We could look for things related to uh, the software that's installed. So all this is information that's useful when we're trying to uh, Bluetooth, audio, all that's great because this will give us information about the system that we've found. And maybe we can find, for example, uh, Tokyo Neon recently wrote a piece on macOS vulnerabilities. Perhaps this computer is uh, not been updated recently and is still vulnerable to that vulnerability. So let's go ahead and find out. Now, the first thing that we can run is a quick check on the firewall. So let's run SP firewall data type. Now when we run this, we should be able to see the default firewall settings for this device. So let's see. Right now it is limiting incoming connections to specific services and applications. Uh, it is allowing remote login via SSH. That's how we're inside. Uh, we are doing firewall logging and it is running in stealth mode. Okay, good information. Now we know the exact network configuration. And if we're trying to get in from the outside or if we're trying to take this to the next level, we know a little bit more about the rules that we're working with. So what else can we do? Well, now we can run the SPF software data type. So let's do that. Now, what we wanna learn here is about the software that's actually running on this computer.
Okay, we can see we're running Mac OS. It's 10.14.5, which actually does make it vulnerable to the vulnerability that um, Tokyo Neon was writing about. We're running Darwin. Uh, we see it's a Macintosh. We can see the computer name, the, com the user type, the secure virtual memory, and all sorts of other great stuff. Now that we've established information about the system and even learned things like the computer name and that it has system integrity protection enabled, we can move on to start learning about the network that it's connected to. Now, if we go back up to our command, we'll modify this to run the SPF network data type. And this will give us information about the network that this computer is connected to. Here we can see that it is connected, uh, let's see. Oh, we can see the all the various status of the different uh, network interfaces, including if we scroll up, the actual IP address we have now, we can see the actual hardware that's connected and more information about the router, for example, which is located here. So we already have found the router on this network. What else can we learn about it? Well, if we want to take a step further, we can start to learn about devices that are on the network around us by looking at the ARP table of this device. Now, this doesn't mean that we're scanning. We are trying to be really stealthy here. So instead of running an ARP scan and kind of just looking everywhere, we're just going to run a uh, look into the ARP table, basically, so we can examine it for other IP addresses on the network and get a feel for what this computer is uh, kind of next to on the network and what it might be able to access once we have a direct connection to this particular box. So let's go ahead and type in ARP. Oops. Attack I for interface, EN0, which is the one that is actually connected to the internet. We're going to type TAC L for list, and then TAC A for all. So here we can see a couple other IP addresses on the network. Now this is interesting because we can start scanning them and determining, hey, is this something else we can break into? Is this another service? We found the router, which is helpful, but we've also found another device without needing to do a single scan. And this is the way we can start to kind of creep around in here and gather more information as we learn about the computer that we're inside and also the other devices that are connected to the same network, thus leveraging the trust that this individual macOS computer has to maybe go after other ones that are connected to the same Wi-Fi or Ethernet network. Thanks to the tools we covered today, you can accurately profile a system and even find out which networks it's connected to. By doing this, we can set ourselves up to get into whatever the user has permission to access. And next time, we'll get into the actual process of digging around for interesting files. Now this and the next are based on articles by Tokyo Neon on Nullbyte. So if you're confused and you need help, you can check them out because they're linked in the description. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.